We are nearly three months into the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, and the list of human rights violations against Afghan women is growing. The Taliban have tried to reassure the world they respect human rights, but the Human Rights Watch says so far women have been denied the right to work and a secondary education. And there are also reports of widespread harassment by the Taliban for women not being accompanied by a male family member or for not wearing clothing deemed modest. To talk more about this, I'd like to bring in Heather Barr from Human Rights Watch. Hi, Heather. Thanks for joining us. So as more rights are rolled back, what are the larger concerns for the safety of Afghan women and girls? So the situation there is, is incredibly grim for women and girls. Um, you've talked about the, the harassment that's happening. Um, Taliban in many places are enforcing a rule that women shouldn't be outside their homes without a male family member escorting them. Um, so, so that in itself really um, takes away the right to education, the right to work. Even if your school is open or you're allowed to go to work, if you haven't got a male family member who can take you everywhere, um, you're essentially a prisoner in your own home. And, and there are many other ways in which they've also dismantled women's rights, abolishing the Ministry of Women's Affairs, abolishing and banning women's sports, dismantling a whole system that was set up to deal with gender-based violence. So does it appear then now very clear that everything that they said at the outset about preserving some of these new gains for Afghan women, um, that that was all just, you know, for naught? Well, I mean, there are some indications that there, there's a bit of room to negotiate with them, and it, it's worth doing so because, you know, these, these issues matter so much to women. So, for example, on September 18th, they reopened schools only for boys, secondary schools, and not for girls. Since then, they, they have reopened at least some girls' schools in about five provinces, and that seems to be a result of negotiations um, and pressure from the local community who want their daughters to study. So I think this is an indication that, um, that there is some room to negotiate, and we'd like to see the international community trying harder to really push um, for, for more respect for rights, even if it's incremental. Right, and especially now when there is such a need for humanitarian aid there, correct? And how does it work with the Taliban now banning most female aid workers from operating in Afghanistan? Is that correct? How is, how is that decision worsening the overall crisis there? So, yeah, as you say, the, the most serious crisis for women and girls is, um, is the humanitarian situation. The head of the World Food Program for the United Nations has said this week that about 95 percent of Afghans don't have enough food to eat. There are about 3.1 severely, 3.1 million, sorry, severely malnourished children. Um, so one of the issues we've written about in the recent days is the fact that the Taliban is um, is restricting the ability of female aid workers to work. Um, in a majority of provinces, they're, they're imposing rules such as saying that these workers have to have a male family member with them, chaperoning them um, at all times while they're doing their jobs. And the reason that this matters so much to women and girls is, first of all, there's a huge number of female-headed households in Afghanistan. Um, so many men were killed during the conflict that's been going on for 40 years that, that women are often heads of households and they're the ones who've been hit hardest because they've mostly been pushed out of their jobs by Taliban policies restricting women's ability to work. So that's one issue. And then another issue is that in all households, girls may face greater risks than, than boys and women more than men. So for example, um, an aid agency was telling me the other day that they're seeing many more girls admitted to hospital for malnutrition than boys. Wow. And we've seen stories about people selling their children. Those children being sold are almost always girls. Oh, devastating. Now, um, Heather, since the Taliban takeover in August, women across uh, Afghanistan have been trying to demonstrate for the right to an education and to work. But recently, the number of those women speaking out in public is dwindling. Can you give us some insight into why that is? Yeah, these women who've been protesting are unbelievably courageous. And I, I think they just feel that they have nothing left to lose. Um, but the Taliban has been striking back at them very hard. They've beaten women protesters. They've beaten journalists who covered the protests. They've tried to track down and identify organizers and protesters afterwards and intimidate and threaten them. And they've banned unauthorized protests. So the fact that women are still coming out at all really speaks to how brave they are and how little they feel they have to lose. 
So speak to us a bit about the kind of mental impact that uh, all of this must be having, the rollback of freedoms having on women, especially when you consider many of those women, uh, you know, there are many women in Afghanistan who never experienced or barely remember what it was like last time the Taliban was in power. What sort of mental um, anguish must those women be going through? It's just been completely devastating. I think it's 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 almost impossible to imagine, you know, all of the women in the entire country going through this kind of cataclysm and, and nightmare together. Um, you know, there there's sort of there are women who experienced this in the past, and you know, their lives were were harmed. Their access to education, their career, were harmed. Um, and so this is a nightmare coming back again for them, for their daughters, their younger sisters. It's something that they heard about um, and felt lucky to have escaped. And, and now it's come for them, too. So people's levels of stress and trauma and depression are, are off the charts. And there's almost no ability for them to access support for, for those kinds of mental health problems. It's all quite sobering. Heather Barr, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we appreciate your insight. Thank you.